Okay, what well, we're going to talk about today is 3D printing a nylon, but on a Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. And uh, there aren't even any profiles in the A1 Mini slicer for nylon. <clears throat> so basically I spent a lot of time watching YouTube videos on printing nylon, trying to find which one people thought was the easiest to get along with, <clears throat> least amount of warping and stuff like that. And what I could find, if I can get far enough away, is this, and I don't know how you would pronounce that, YX and then polyer. And down here is their recommendations on the, uh, on the bag. You can see it's nylon, white, and they're saying the print temperature is anywhere between 220 and 280 with a bed temperature between 80 and 100 C. It is more looking online, like I said, and also watching the YouTube videos and most of the people that were using this filament were actually printing in the uh, 260 to 280 range and running their bed from, just like the thing said, anywhere from 80 to 100 C. So I went into the, uh, this is the Bamboo Lab Studio slicer, and uh, selected something that would give me <clears throat> a starting point instead of generic PLA. I went down and I took, I took a generic uh, TPU somewhere, right here. I started with generic TPU, opened that up, and once it had selected it, that's... Uh, I renamed it after I selected it. So once you select something, this is the one that I made. I renamed the TPU one, that name that you can't pronounce, and then nylon. Then hit on this little box right here, <clears throat> and you can get into all the areas to make adjustments. So the first thing I adjusted, I couldn't change the grayed out boxes, unfortunately. But the first thing I adjusted is the recommended nozzle temperatures. I changed that. 240 to 280 and if you don't change those first then it kind of fights you on making changes down below so down below <clears throat> I actually change the nozzle temperature to 260 and other layers layers at 260 and I think that's the only thing I changed on the filament one then on cooling from all the videos I could watch they were basically recommending no part cooling to turn the fans uh, completely off so that's in the case of this fan speed zero, fan speed zero on threshold. Anywhere I could go through here and find anything that had to do with fan speed, auxiliary cooling fan speed zero, zeroed everything out there. Don't believe it did anything there. Advanced, no. Nope. So those are the uh, only changes I made. And once I made them, then I uh, saved it because up here you typed in a name and you can hit save. I saved it as that new name so I could find it. And that's the profile that I sliced with on my uh, A1 Mini. We'll take a closer look at the parts here in the A1 Mini. But as you can see on this, uh, if I can get the camera back far enough, I basically feed from a, a, a dry box. This is an old JO box. I've had it for quite a few years. Modified it because one of the problems that those old boxes had is sure they would heat up and get the moisture from the filament, the moisture was end up being trapped inside it. So I actually have vents on the top and the bottom and I get a chimney effect and then I can close the vents. Anyway, I keep my uh, my nylon in there while I was printing and uh, the bed went up to uh, whatever I just said, ADC, no problem, and printed. And uh, this was the results. I had absolutely no stringing at all, no warping at all. And this actually feels like nylon. It's nice and slick and waxy feeling. This was been in the bottom. You see there wasn't any warping. It uh, stuck well. I did use glue stick on there. When I was watching all the different videos, a lot of people were using something on their bed. One, because sometimes nylon can stick too well and ruin your bed. And two, sometimes depending on what your bed type is, it doesn't stick at all and then you get warping. So I decided to just use the glue stick because it's very easy to clean up with water and it's very inexpensive. Worked very well. Managed to uh, 
to do all these different gears. Quite a few of these little ones. These are going to be used in a, a project if you've been following my channel that I'm doing for a friend of mine. And here are the nylon gears actually running. They run very smooth. They run very well. Um, let me take this off. So those are the little nylon ones up in there that are at 35 degree angle and they run on on this one. That big one down in there is of course this guy with a ball bearing in the end. And the motor drive ones out here. So <clears throat> Even though there aren't any profiles for an A1 Mini being able to print uh, nylon, I have found that it's quite easy. In fact, it prints just as easy as PLA. Um, like I say, uh, the profile that I selected on the uh, slicer, the TPU one, I initially selected that one because I knew the temperatures would already be running higher, but two, I knew, I knew the print speeds would already be set lower and probably the retractions would already be adjusted so I wouldn't have to deal with any of that stuff because you do need to print slower. That was the other thing that I noticed in all the videos when they were talking about printing nylon and specifically when they were printing this brand of nylon. I just picked this up off Amazon. It was actually no more expensive than anything else. I mean, granted there's some cheap PLAs out there right now, but I think it's can't remember for sure, but it was 20 something delivered. So it wasn't bad at all. And uh, so you print slow, print hot, <laughs> both on your bed and your nozzle, uh, print with no cooling fan, and you're going to be okay. But I uh, would go ahead and set up a profile like I did in the slicer so that it, uh, so that you don't have to go in and change all of that stuff manually. Now I did have one, one failure, if I can find it here, here we are. This would have, this would have been this part, but I noticed it was printing in air at that point. And initially I had the uh, nozzle temperature uh, running 250. And after I had this problem, I went ahead and upped it to 260. And I didn't have to take anything apart. I just got on the end of the uh, tube there and pushed on it while it was trying to feed through and eventually cleared whatever was unhappy in the nozzle. I think between the retractions, you know, I ended up getting a little bit of a nozzle plug. Once I cleared that and started printing at 260, I didn't have any, uh, didn't have any more problems. So I might even be able to run it a little bit harder. Perhaps the, the 280 range is even going to make the... Uh, printer happier I don't know all I know is I printed two sets of parts all total and uh, they all turned out close to perfect I did, haven't done any cleanup on these whatsoever there was uh, there was no stringing issue a lot of people said they have stringing problems there was no bed lifting issues everything adhered and printed flat no warping the parts are dimensionally accurate very very happy with that. Everything meshes and moves quietly. There's uh, some good videos on this particular filament being uh, tested for for strength and durability in, in different directions and printing layers and everything that were quite impressive. So it was one of the reasons I decided to try this particular brand because one, it was supposed to be easy to print, it wasn't supposed to be super expensive and it was uh, quite durable. So. There you go. You can print nylon on an A1 Mini, even though they don't even have a profile to do that.